No, I know. Well, good morning, everybody. I'm Matt Neighbors. <laughs> I, I used to be here. But, uh, no, I, listen, I appreciate it. Uh, appreciate y'all very much. Uh, with these last three months, I've gotten a lot of cards and a lot of uh, text messages, and it is good to be back. I've uh, Got a new haircut, got a new pair of glasses, so I'm ready to go, you know. I can actually see things again. So uh, we're going to start our service off this morning with baptism. And uh, so if we could just have a quick word of prayer to uh, uh, get our hearts ready for, for baptism this morning. Father, we thank you for this day. We thank you for who you are. Lord, we uh, thank you, Lord, that we're privileged to uh, begin this service this morning with the ordinance of baptism. And, Father, we just pray for this one being baptized today, that they would just grow in their faith, that, Father, this church would uh, just be faithful to encourage them and the, uh, nurture them in the admonition of the Lord, Father, and we just uh, love you. Pray your blessings on this service today. In your name we pray. Amen. Good morning, church family. It is a privilege to begin the service today with baptism. And uh, Mallory Davis, uh, several weeks ago, came forward in a service, and she shared with us that she had been going through the motions, but she knew that she had come to know Christ in a real way. So this morning we're going to uh, follow that in baptism because the Bible teaches believers baptism, and so... We're privileged to do that today. This is Mallory Davis. Mallory, upon your profession of faith in the Lord Jesus Christ, and in obedience to his command, I baptize you, my sister, Mallory Davis, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Buried in the likeness of his death, raised into the new life of his blessed resurrection. God bless you. Give a shout out to Sam Patton. I uh, appreciate him filling in these last three months. And I uh, uh, know he did a great job for you guys. Sam and I are in the singing churchmen together and have uh, uh, traveled the world singing together. So I uh, appreciate his faithfulness uh, during this last three months. Well, our uh, call to worship scripture this morning is found in uh, Mark chapter 12. And uh, this is where the religious leaders were questioning Jesus about the greatest commandment. So Mark chapter 12, let's stand together as we uh, read God's word and begin to sing this morning. Mark chapter 12, verses 28 through 31. It says, one of the teachers of the law came and heard them debating, noticing that Jesus had given them a good answer. He asked him, of all the commandments, which is the most important? Jesus replied, the most important one, Jesus answered, is this, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind, and with all your strength. And the second is this, love your neighbor as yourself. There is no commandment greater than thee. Let's bow together. Father, thank you for your word. Thank you that you've allowed us to uh, study this, and, uh, and Lord, just give, uh, get insight to you and, uh, and your kingdom. Father, we just pray that we would love one another and that you would remind us each day of new ways to do that. Lord, we thank you for this time together. In your name we pray. Amen. Let's remain standing as we sing. He became sin who knew no sin. We might become his righteousness. Jesus Messiah. sin, who knew no sin, that we might become his righteousness. He humbled himself and carried the cross. Love so Yeah. 
weeks ago I was up here and I said Moses had done the ark yeah well Ross told me it was Noah okay so I'm trying to figure out maybe if I go see the ark I'll figure that out on my own he would trust Ross okay but anyway there's me and 45 other people signed up to go to the ark that just leaves 10 money's due by tomorrow so tomorrow afternoon I'll be coming up and working the list and seeing Whose money we got, and so if you want to go, today is the day to sign up. Because we have the bus full with other people that want to go, but our church members get to go first. So if you want to go, sign up today and pay your money. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Maddie. <laughs> Let me share some announcements with you this morning before we pray. Um, we have a back to school bash on August the 10th with a snow cone truck. I'm going to make sure I make that myself. Uh, games, prizes, and funds. This is uh, fun. This is August 10th, this coming Wednesday at 6 p.m. Team, kick, uh, team Kid Kickoff is Wednesday, August 17th, and that's when we'll start our Team Kid program back up. And uh, it will begin at 6. Check in is at 545. Remember all that. We have Discipleship First Sunday School class, uh, Sunday School, Disciple First Sunday night classes coming up on August the 21st. So I believe that's two weeks from tonight. And uh, we will be having uh, several different classes. We know for one, Brother Neil will be teaching the creation class in the Fellowship Hall. And then we have some others. Uh, I think we have a parenting uh, class and we have some other things, but we'll let you know next Sunday about that. 
Uh, the Ark Encounter trip has already been mentioned. Uh, please uh, make your uh, uh, decision on that because we are going to open it up beginning tomorrow. And then there's some upcoming meetings, okay? You see some of these today. Uh, there's one today with the education and then uh, some others during the week. So if you're a part of that committee, please help us out. There's going to be a young adult cookout on Monday, August the 15th at 6 p.m. All young adults are invited. And uh, I believe Brother Thomas and I are going to try to help out with uh, the cooking on that night. Uh, so we're looking forward to that. And so if you would please uh, be a part of that. School is c coming back on. I do realize for some of you who have a sad face, some of you have a happy face. So uh, this kind of depends. But anyway, we're... We're glad you're here today. We pray that you would uh, be able to worship the Lord with us. We even have some former church members, the Umplets, are back with us. You all slept out, slept out, slipped out without me <laughs> saying goodbye. Did I say slept out? <laughs> I'm sorry, I didn't put my teeth in right this morning. But it's good to see Jay and Wendy uh, back with us, and uh, we appreciate them very much. Uh, when I saw them come in the deal, I thought, okay, Lord, you brought them back from Kansas. They were not excited about that, but evidently they are going to go back. But anyway, we're glad to have them today. Let me, what? Right where? Oh, yes, Larry Gloria. Yes, we, we've been mentioning them. We've had Larry on the prayer list. So uh, it's good when former church members come back and visit us. It makes us feel good, okay? So we don't want, it doesn't mean we want you to leave and go to another church, but uh, anyway. Uh, let me share some prayer requests with you this morning as we go to the Lord. Uh, Howard Irving is in Grove Nursing Center after breaking a hip, and he's going through therapy. Also, Mallory Davis's dad, Richard Wakeman, and I believe Richard is with us today. He's got some heart issues. We want to continue to pray for him. Uh, Billy Hausman also has uh, some health issues. It's good to see Billy. And uh, my, one of my uh, cousins, Billy, uh, mentioned you yesterday at our family reunion. She said, the lady that sends me the cards, I said, you're talking about Billy Hausman. So uh, anyway, she was very complimentary of you uh, yesterday. Uh, Vera Trout, it says upcoming eye surgery. She has decided not to have that surgery. Uh, so we just want to pray for her. She is having some issues uh, with her eyes. We want to remember Cheryl Bruns uh, and her uh, family today in the death of her dad. I went to a, Lori and I went to a service yesterday in Kansas and uh, just pray for her. He was 96 years of age, but the great thing this last year, about the last six months, he came to know the Lord. And so he was ready to meet the Lord. So that, that's a praise. Let's also continue to remember our college students. Some of them are getting ready to go back. Uh, to classes, our servicemen and women. And then some of our church family, Mae Baker, is, who is moving to Grand Lake Villa. We want to remember her today. Also, the Boltons, Star Brown, Alan Bruns, Ima Jean Carr, Mark Clark, Rita Cunningham, Velma Geis, Jean Grounds. Let's remember these individuals along with Danny Knight, Sandy Lemon, Charlene Pritchard, Tommy Noah. It's good to see uh, Tommy with us today. Let's remember the Schilt family, our missionaries in Malawi. And then let's also remember Judy Ace and her family and the death of her granddaughter. So there are several on this list. Let's also pray for our country today. And let's pray that uh, we would see God's uh, God move in our lives. Uh, we're going to be sharing a message today out of John 14, which talks that ties love and obedience together. And we're going to be sharing about that today. We also uh, want to remember, um, I came out of here, I'm not quite prepared this morning. I came out of here here without having our, uh, all of our committee. Let's see if I can do it by memory. Well, you elected a youth search committee last Sunday, and I believe it is Joe McCorkle. I believe it is Quentin Dodd. I believe it is um, Jim Talbot. I believe it is Gary Witt. Jesse Who? Jesse Carper. Jesse Carper. Is that it? Yeah. Uh, Randy, Randy Maccabee is the alternate. Okay, so would you please remember these? We will have these 
uh, in the bulletin for you to be praying about on our prayer list as they began to search. Uh, and we search, ask the Lord to help us with our youth search committee, okay? I already mentioned them. Yes, college students. So let's pray together. Would you bow with me for a time of prayer? Father, Lord, we come to you today. Uh, we look around us and see a lot of things that are not right. We look at our old world today. We see how sin has affected uh, so many people, our own lives included. All of us are sinners. In fact, there are only two groups of sinners today in this audience. There are saved sinners and lost sinners. Father, I pray for those who are lost. I pray that they would come under the heavy hand of conviction of the Holy Spirit. We're going to talk about the Holy Spirit today and how he moves in the lives of people. And Lord, thank you that you provided a Savior. His name is Jesus Christ. And if we would just simply put our faith and trust in him, you promise to give us salvation. Lord, today would you uh, meet the needs that are here. Sometimes we come to church services when we are not spiritually well. Sometimes we're not physically well. And so, Father, I just pray for each and every family, each and every individual today. Father, help us to lay aside anything that might be on our minds, that might be captivating our thoughts. And Lord, would you today speak to us in a very real way. Father, forgive us of sin. Cleanse us today. Make us right with you. We pray all of this and all prayers in Jesus' name. Amen. Aren't you thankful this morning for God's amazing grace? Amen. I'd quite like to sing a song this morning um, called He Looked Beyond My Fault. So listen as we sing. Go ahead.
Amen. He looked beyond my fault and he saw my need. Let's continue in our singing this morning. His mercy is more. Praise the Lord. <clears throat> Praise the Lord. His mercy is more. Stronger than darkness, new every morn. Our sins, they are many. His mercy is more. What love could remember? No wrongs we have done. Omniscient, all knowing, he counts not their sum. Grown into a sea without bottom or shore. Our sins, they are many, his mercy is more. Praise the Lord, his mercy is more. Stronger than darkness, new every morn. Our sins, What father so tender is calling us home? He welcomes the weakest, the vilest, the poor. Our sins, they are many. His mercy is more. Praise the Lord. His mercy is more. Strong darkness do every morn our sins they are many his mercy is more what riches of kindness he lavished on us his blood was the payment his life was the cost he stood me the debt we could never afford. Our sins, they are many. His mercy is more. Listen up. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. His mercy is more. Stronger than darkness. Thanks to the Lord, our God and King, His love endures forever. Give thanks to the Lord, our God and King, His love endures forever. For He is good, He's above all things. His love endures forever.
setting sun. His love endures forever, and by the grace of God we will carry on. His love endures forever. Sing praise, sing praise, sing praise, sing. together as we sing this next song. This is a prayer that I hope is on the heart of every Christian. Draw me close to you. Never let me go. Draw me close to you.
together as our uh, ushers come forward to continue our time of offering and giving. Let's pray together. Father, we thank you that you are near us. And Lord, we ask you each and every day just to be near us, Father. You're all I want, and you're all that we've ever needed, Father. Thank you for who you are this day, and uh, I just pray that you'll bless the teaching of your word as Brother Jim comes to give it. And Lord, bless this time to give. In your name we pray. Amen. <laughs> Thank you, Lois. Well, it's uh, good to be able to preach God's Word this morning. I hope you have your Bibles as the children are going to Children's Church. Um, John chapter 14 today. We're continuing our study in the Gospel of John. And uh, if I look like maybe I've got in a cat fight on my face today, it's uh, my wife made me go to the dermatologist and uh, she took, I, I tell you what folks, it looked like a blowtorch, but it supposedly was nitrogen, frozen nitrogen, but I'm going to tell you, it hurt. So I'm going to look boogered up for a little bit, so just bear with me. And no, my wife did not lay a hand on me, so let's try to quell those rumors here while we're at it. Yeah, it's coming. Uh, in John chapter 14, we're going to be looking at verses 15 through 18 in our passage today under the title of the significance of obedience and folks when I looked at this passage of scripture to begin to study I immediately thought of an old great hymn that we have sung in our church and continue to sing the title of it is when we walk with the Lord now you know it as trust and obey um, when we walk with the Lord in the light of his word what a glory he sheds on our way. While we do his good will, he abides with us still. And with all who will trust and obey. And then the refrain we all know, trust and obey, for there's no other way to be happy in Jesus but to trust and obey. Now the writer of this hymn, his name was John Sammons. He was born in 1846 in Brooklyn, New York. And he was a successful businessman and Presbyterian minister. 
He taught at the Bible Institute of Los Angeles and wrote more than a hundred hymns. He died in 1919 in Los Angeles, California. Um, Daniel Brink Towner was the one who composed the hymn. And folks, many times that's what will happen. You'll have somebody write the words and then you'll have somebody come along and say, man, I like those words. Let's see if we can get that to a tune. And many times that would be how our uh, hymns would come about. But Daniel Brink Towner, who composed the tune, he, he explains the origins of the song. He said, Mr. Moody, Dwight Moody, was conducting a series of meetings in Brockton, Massachusetts, somewhere in and around 1886. And I had the pleasure of singing for him. One night a young man rose in a testimony meeting and said, I am not quite sure, but I am going to trust and I am going to obey. He jotted down those sentences and then he came with the words or came with the tune. He shared them with Reverend John Samus, the Presbyterian minister. He wrote the, song, the words and Mr. Brink or Mr. Towner wrote the tune. And so that is when we get, when we walk with the Lord. Um, I share that with you because that particular hymn talks about this idea of trusting and obeying. The idea of love and obey is significant in Scripture, and so I want us to understand that. Now, let me share with you there is a problem with Christians today, and I include myself in it. The problem is disobedience. The problem is we are not, we're listening to God's Word in, in reference to it coming into our ears, but we are not obeying God's Word. We are choosing, we're doing the cafeteria approach to Christianity. We are deciding what we like, and then whatever we don't like, we set it aside. Folks, the Bible doesn't give us that kind of option. When Jesus commands us to do something, he means it. And he desires for his disciples, the immediate context is his disciples. But it relates to us today. And so I want to challenge you with that idea. We are not obeying the Lord like we are commanded to. And I want to quote Dr. Adrian Rogers, who has gone on to be with the Lord. But he preached a message one day at Bellevue Baptist Church. And he shared this. He said, now obedience is something we don't hear much about. We preach so much on salvation by grace through faith, and we tell people that salvation is a gift of God, that sometimes if we talk about obedience, people think we're legalist. But I would have to agree with Martin Luther, who said this, We're not saved by faith and works, but we are saved by a faith that works. Now, think about that for a minute. We are not saved by faith and works. There is no works that you and I can do that is going to make God pleased with us. We are sinners. But praise God, the gift of salvation through Jesus Christ, that tremendous word called grace, we are saved by a faith that fleshes itself out in the world and it works. James said, faith without works is dead. And there's so many things that hinge on our obedience. So let's look at that today, John chapter 14. I'm going to be reading from the New American Standard Bible. And if you would follow with me as I begin reading in verse 15. Jesus' words, he says, If you love me, you will keep my commandments. I will ask the Father, and he will give you another helper, that he may be with you forever. That is the Spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive, because it does not see him or know him, but you know him, because... He abides with you and will be with you. I will not leave you as orphans. I will come to you. May God bless the reading of his word. Let's pray today. Father, Lord, take this, this precious word. 
Lord, let it penetrate the hearts of people. Lord, it's already beginning to right now. And I pray, Father, that you would help us to understand what you're trying to get across to us today. Father, help us to understand that it's not enough to just say we love someone. But Lord, we, there has to be deeds. There will be, there will be proof of our devotion by our willingness to obey. So, Father, today, speak to our hearts, we pray. In Jesus' name, amen. There are three things that I basically want to share with you today in this passage of Scripture. First of all, the motive of our obedience. It's found in the first part of verse 15. If you love me, okay? So the motive of our, obedi of our obedience is love. And notice what the verse says. It can be translated, if you keep on loving me. Folks, it's not a one-time thing. A lot of people sometimes they'll look at Scripture and say, okay, well, I'm going to make one decision, and I'm going to tell someone that I love them or whatever, and then that's it. Kind of like the man who looked at his wife. She said, you never tell me you love me anymore. He said, I told you when we got married, I love you, and if anything changes, I'll let you know. Folks, that's not the way God wants us to work. He wants us to show that we love him by actions. And so if we keep on loving him, once you give your life to Christ, folks, this is, it's forever. We're not treating Jesus as an insurance policy today, a fire, uh, fire hazard policy or something like that. Okay, I went ahead and bought it, and one of these days if I need it, I'll bring you up. I'll get you out of my file cabinet. No, no. Folks, Jesus needs to be with us every day. We need to be obeying his commandments. We need to be loving him. Now, previously, in John chapter 13, verses 34 and 35, listen to what Jesus said. This is right before we get into chapter 14. It's up on the screen. A new commandment I give to you, that you love one another, even as I have loved you, that you also love one another okay and so he writes there he gives them this new commandment now the verb for love is in the present tense speaking of a continuous action and if you look at the context here in verse 15 if you constantly love keep on loving me is what the scripture says look down at verse 21 of chapter 14 he who has my commandments and keeps them is the one who loves me. Now, folks, that's pretty plain. I don't have to get into theological terms to, to help you to understand that, do I? Verse 21, he who has my commandments and keeps them. That means he obeys them. That means he meditates on them day and night. That means he teaches them to his children. That means he or her, the husband and the wife, they make it a matter of priority in their life. They don't let dust settle on their Bibles, but they get them out. They read them. They meditate on them. And they try to live that which is there. You notice that Jesus says here, it's clearly in verse 21, he who has my commandments and keeps them is the one who loves me. And he who loves me will be loved by my, by my father and I will love him and will but disclose myself to him. You see, Jesus links loving him and obeying his word. So look at the opposite for a moment. If you do not keep my word, you do not love me. Folks, take that to heart for a moment. That's one thing I like about John. John didn't have a lot of gray area. You look at 1 John, you look at the Gospel of John. It's pretty cut and dried. If you love Jesus today, don't tell me by your words. Show me by your actions. Show me that Jesus Christ is a part of your life by the way in which you live, the way in which you relate to people. Do you love people unconditionally? Because that's what Jesus did. He loved them warts and all. That's why I think he loves me really special today. <laughs> but he loves us warts and all. There are some people that are hard to get along with, aren't, aren't they? 
Uh, some people are easy, you know, you know, hey, man, he's a fun-loving, she's a fun-loving person, just easy to get along with. And, and someone ha- some of them have an edge about them, and that, that's okay. We're all different. God created us differently. But folks, we're supposed to love and accept people because that's exactly what Jesus said. Now, that doesn't mean we have to accept their sin. The lost world hates it when I make this statement. You can love the sinner and hate the sin. But folks, God can give you that capacity because that's exactly what he did. He loves us as sinners, but he hates the sin. Folks, he knows what sin does to people. He knows what sin has done from the garden on. He's had to supply us a redeemer in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. That's who that is. And folks, it was sin that has marred the world. And it has done so much damage to our families, to our culture, and to our world today. It's all because of sin. If you do not keep my word, you don't love me. That's the, uh, that's the very opposite of this verse 15. And John emphasized the inseparable link between love and obedience in his first epistle. I want you to listen to a few uh, passages of Scripture out of 1 John because he was responsible for that through the inspiration of the Holy Spirit. Listen to 1 John chapter 2, verses 3 through 5. It'll be up on the screen. By this we know that we have come to know him if we keep his commandments. The one who says, I have come to know him and does not keep his commandments is a liar, and the truth is not in him. But whoever keeps his word and in him the love of God has truly been perfected. By this we know that we are in him. Okay? Now listen to 1 John chapter 3, verse 24. The one who keeps his commandments abides in him and he in him. We know by this that he abides in us by the Spirit whom he has given us. The word abides means to remain. It means to come in. It means to dwell. And that's exactly what Jesus does when we confess our sins and we call upon the name of the Lord. Listen to 1 John chapter 5 and verse 2 and 3. By this we know that we love the children of God When we love God and observe his commandments, for this is the love of God, that we keep his commandments, and his commandments are not burdensome. Did you hear that? His commandments are not burdensome when Jesus Christ is in control in your life. When you truly love him with a dedication that only uh, Christ can give you. Jesus made it clear to the original disciples and to all who trust in Jesus, if you really love me, you will keep my commandments. Now the love, obviously in this passage of Scripture, is the complete self-sacrificing love that Jesus displayed on the cross, folks. It is the highest devotion to someone. If you are totally devoted to Jesus, it will be fleshed out in your obedience to his word, period. So let me ask you this morning, do you love Jesus? It will be seen in your obedience to the Word. You will not ignore His Word. You will not put it to the side, but you will see that it is a part of the Lord. Jesus is the Word. I am the way, the truth, and the life. The word truth there, speaking of the spoken Word. If to love God is to love Him with all of our heart, soul, and mind, That's the reason why I asked Brother Matt to share that in the call to worship this morning, the passage of Scripture. Jesus said that basically the commandments could be summed up in two. Love the Lord your God with all of your heart, soul, mind, and spirit. And then the second one, love your neighbor as yourself. Folks, the motive for our obedience should be Love. Notice the second thing in the last part of verse 15. The measure of our obedience is the Word of God. If you love me, you will keep my commandments. That word commandments is the same word that it refers back to the Old Testament in reference to commandments then. And that's what we usually think of. We think of the, the ten big ones, right? The ten commandments. But Jesus just gave us a new commandment in chapter 13. We just read that a little bit ago. So everything that he shares with his disciples is new. 
Because this is progressive revelation. This is the Word of God, the incarnate, Jesus Christ. And folks, we hinge on His words. That's why we like, that's why we look to Matthew 5, verse, uh, uh, chapter 5 and through, verse, uh, through chapter 7. We have the Sermon on the Mount. We have the great teachings that are here in the Gospels, here especially in, John, in uh, John's Gospel, okay? So, if love is the motive for our obedience, then the Word of God is the measure of our be- obedience. Now look at verse 21 again of chapter 14. He who has my commandments and keeps them is the one who loves me. Hmm. Continue with verse 23 there. I thought I had that written down. He, Jesus answers and said, If anyone loves me, he will keep my word, and my Father will love him, and we will come to him and make our abode with him. Folks, again, very clear that Jesus is showing the importance of God's word today. You see, that's why Satan hates the Bible. Satan hates Scripture. He hates the truth of God's Word. That's why Satan's been twisting it all the time since the beginning. Remember, he twisted it in the garden? And he's twisting it today. We have people today who are using Scripture to condone all types of immorality because they decide What is God's Word? They pick and choose. But folks, you can't do that. 2 Timothy says, All Scripture is inspired by God. The word all there means every part of the whole. Paul was telling us that every part of the whole of Scripture is God-breathed. It's not up for debate. It is the truth. Now, what we need to be doing today, we shouldn't be allowing the culture to determine and start molding us and making us into the culture. We as Christians should be allowing God's Word. We immerse ourselves in it. Folks, if we knew it, we would be able to discern that which is false and say, listen, that's not what God says. He says this. I must obey that. I have no other choice. I am given my life. I love him. I'm going to obey him. Listen to a, listen to a verse in Luke chapter 6, verse 46. Jesus, his words. He said, why do you call me Lord, Lord, and do not do what I say? Now, folks, I want you to stop and think about that phrase for a minute. The word Lord means master. It means boss. Jesus has control of your life. If he has control of your life, why do you not do what he says? You see, that's, that doesn't fit. If we, he is our Lord, then we need to do what he says. To, fall, to fail to obey God, folks, is nothing short of rebellion. You are rebelling against God when you ignore God's word. You are in a state of rebellion when you fail to keep his word. My challenge to you today is understand the significance of the two. Love and obedience. Oh, Brother Jim, I love God. I have this lovey-dovey feeling. I have warm feelings when I think of God. I have warm feelings when I take a bath. Especially if the water's hot. Folks, don't base it on feelings today. Base it on the truth of God's Word. The measure of our obedience is God's Word. It is not up for debate today. It is final. His Word reigns. But there's a third thing, and I close with this. We'll call it the might of our obedience or the strength or the power. The might of our obedience is in verses 16 through 18. This is where he begins to talk about the Holy Spirit. I will ask the Father, and he will give you another helper, that he may be with you forever. That is the Spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive because it does not see him or know him. But you know him because he abides with you and will be in you. I will not leave you as orphans. I will come to you. 
You see, the might or the, the power of obedience is the Holy Spirit. These are important. These verses are important for us to understand. Now, Jesus gives us, he gives two special names to the Holy Spirit in this passage. One is the word helper or comforter, depending on your translation. And it is a compound word. It is the word parakletos. And you've probably heard some preachers say something about paraclete. It's in reference to the Holy Spirit. One called alongside. It's a compound word. One who is called alongside to help, to assist, or to uh, it really just another word for help. Listen to what it says in 1 John chapter 2, verse 1, the same word used. My little children, I am writing these things to you that you may not sin. And if anyone sins, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous. The word advocate is translated, that's the word paraclete. We have a helper called alongside of us, the Holy Spirit of God. Folks, we have somebody at the right hand of the Father today, Jesus Christ. He is our advocate. He is our paraclete. He is one who will intercede for us. He is one when Satan makes his accusations about you and me, he leans over to the Father and says, he or she, that's one of mine. The idea of paraclete here. Jesus was a paraclete. They physically walked with him, talked with him. He spoke to them. He spoke truth. Folks, they marveled at his words. They marveled at his miracles. They marveled at what Jesus did. But guess what? Jesus is getting ready to leave. So he's trying to comfort them. And he says, I'm going to give you another comforter. The word another is the word means another of the same kind. Now, there is a word for another of a different kind, but it's not used here. The, in, the interesting thing about the words, another of the same kind. I'm going to give you a paraclete just like me. And he is going to be able to be with you forever. And guess what? The second name, he is the spirit of truth. Jesus has already communicated to the disciples that he is the truth. I am the way, the truth, and the life. The Holy Spirit, who is truth, will guide us in truth. He will lead those disciples in truth. And notice again, the Son and the Spirit, they're not in competition with one another. They are completing one another. In fact, notice verse 17. That is the Spirit of truth. Okay? Actually, it's verse 16. I will ask the Father and he will give you another helper that he may be with you forever. You see all three of the Godhead there? God the Father, God the Son, I will ask the Father and he will give us another helper. Folks, that is the Holy Spirit of God. And listen, the Holy Spirit of God cannot, he can't lie. He cannot lead you astray. He is the spirit of truth and he uses the word of truth to guide us in the will and the work of our heavenly father. He will help you today to love Jesus with all of your heart because he'll help you to obey. Verse 17 reminds us that the world does not receive the Holy Spirit because it didn't receive Jesus either. Folks, the world lives by sight, not by faith. Followers of Jesus know him. They're filled with the Spirit. They're guided by the Comforter who is coming after Jesus after he departs from this earth. Do you see how much the Lord loves you today and how he's providing for you to help you in this day? You can live the Christian life. My friend, you don't have to give in and be mediocre. God wants you to shine for him. God wants you to live for him. And my friend, if you love him, you will keep his commandments. The motive of our obedience is love. I love Jesus with all of my heart. The measure of our obedience is the word of God. Do you have a daily intake of God's word? Find you scripture that you can understand. If your Bible, you don't understand it, find a good version. Ask me. I'll tell you. I can share with you. This New American Standard that I use is a good version of Scripture, but there are other good ones as well. Get into the Word. Know the truth 
from error. Because I'm going to tell you what the world's going to give you. It's going to give you opinions and innuendos and philosophies that are contrary to the Word of God. And folks, opinions are like belly buttons. Everybody has one. The measure of our obedience is the Word of God and the might, the power of our obedience is the Holy Spirit. Folks, the Holy Spirit of God, He wants to be control. He wants to have control of your life. Spirit-filled, spirit-controlled. When you get bumped or jostled in this world, what comes out? If the Spirit of God is controlling your life, the love, the joy, the peace, the patience, the kindness, the goodness, the gentleness, the self-control, folks, that will bubble out of you because you, He is in control of you. Bringing your life in conformity with God's Word is the secret to obedience. You say you love Him today? Where is God's Word? Did you bring it with you this morning? Are you involved in Bible study? Do you get into the Word of God and do you have a daily diet or are you just simply putting it to the side and saying, you know what, I'm just going to bypass, the, bypass that and I'm going to bypass prayer and I'm just going to show up. Folks, we need a daily intake of God's Word and prayer. That's the only, thing, the only way that's going to make a difference in our world today. I invite you to trust and obey. For there's no other way to be happy in Jesus but to trust and obey. I want us to bow our heads in a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, today, I pray that you would help people to respond in faith. Lord, thank you for your precious word. It is powerful. And I, as your servant, have I have attempted to share it with people today in preaching and proclaiming your word. But Father, it's the power of your word that makes a difference. I can talk people into something, but somebody else can talk them out of it. But Lord, when it's from you, it sticks. It makes a difference. Lord, I pray if there's someone here today who has never trusted in Christ, they've never repented of their sins, They've never admitted that they're a sinner. I pray, Father, that today might be the day of salvation for them. Lord, there are many of us today that name the name of Christ, but some of us would have to admit, maybe most of us, that we are not keeping your commandments like we should. We're picking and choosing. We're allowing the world's philosophy to be what we do uh, and to influence us rather than the Word of God. And it's because we're listening to the world more than we're listening to you. Forgive us of that. Help us to come back to you. I pray that we would renew our faith, that we would, uh, Lord, uh, recommit our lives to you today. Whatever the sin is, whatever the issue that keeps us from serving you completely and loving you and obeying you. Lord, help us to get rid of that today. It might be a relationship. It might be something that we are pursuing. It may be a possession that we have. Whatever it is, Lord, help us to get rid of it. Help us to move it to the side and help us to totally trust and obey in you. Father, would you accomplish your will in the lives of people here today? There may be someone here today who uh, has been seeking a church home. I pray, Father, that, Lord, if this is the place that you want this individual to come, this family or whatever it may be, Lord, help them to respond in faith. Lord, there may be someone that just needs to come to the altar. They have a burden because they have a family member who is hurting today or who has strayed from the word. Father, we're, we'll win the battle when we get on our knees. Help us to do so today, we pray. In Jesus' name, amen. Would you stand to your feet? As Brother Matt leads us in a hymn of invitation, you come as we sing together.
Christ the Lord upon the tree in the stead of ruined sinners hangs the Lamb in victory see the price of our redemption see the Father's plan unfold bringing many sons to glory grace unmeasured love Beautiful song that we sang there. Let's remember that. Uh, before we leave this morning, let me, uh, I want to do a little presentation. Is Chase Nelson here today? There she is. I thought she was going to come in. There she is. Come on, Chase. Come on down. You're our next contestant on The Price is Right. No, I'm just kidding. Chase has been one of our summer interns this past summer, and uh, she goes to Oklahoma Baptist University. You know her because she's grown up here in our church, uh, the daughter of Thomas and Chrissy. And uh, so Chase, uh, Melanie's not here today, and we'll get her her card. But we just want to give you a card of appreciation and maybe a little something in there to help you with some gas. And we just appreciate what you did this past <laughs> summer. Amen. Did a great job. Thank you. God bless you. Uh, pray for Chase is one of those uh, college students, okay? All right, we will not have services tonight. You will be dismissed for the rest of the day. If you are on the education committee, come back at about 1.30, and uh, we'll uh, have that committee. Remember the activities for the week. We will have Bible study. I appreciate uh, Brother Gary Bishop uh, filling in for me uh, this past Wednesday. I was able to go see uh, uh, a former uh, pastor, he's a retired pastor, Carl Whitlock, who's on our prayer list. He's in dialysis, and we were able to go see them in San Diego for a few days, so I appreciate the opportunity to do that. So we're ready uh, to get back and serve. So anyway, thank you. God bless you. Brother Matt, are you ready to... Uh, Brother Sam was very impressed with our closing song. He shared that with us, so why don't you close us with it again? Okay, tomorrow morning we will start the oh. remodel of the stage, so take one good look at it, and uh, cause it it's is not going to no look more. like this anymore. So uh, if you All can right. help uh, tomorrow, just uh, we're going to have to be hauling chairs and uh, everything else off of here as we begin our uh, remodel. So uh, let's sing together. <laughs> Be a light unto the world as we